All right, so today we're looking at power. Let me give you kind of a context for this. When you were working in the uh, series in Parallel Lab, some people mentioned that the resistor, so if I draw a simple circuit here, that the resistor would heat up. They touched it and said, hey, that's hot. In fact, someone in my second period actually, like, not seriously, but burned their hand on the resistor. That's because this resistor, remember, slows down electrons. Well, think about this. If something has a velocity, so if the electrons are going this way, if they have a velocity that way, if I slow them down, I take away some of their velocity. So now I've made their velocity smaller once they pass through the resistor. If something has a velocity, it has a kinetic energy. And if I've made their velocity smaller, then I've made their kinetic energy smaller. But we can't just get rid of energy. It can't just disappear. So that energy has to become something. That kinetic energy turns into heat. And so heat radiates off this. That's the kinetic energy that the resistor took away from the electrons. So the resistor actually takes away kinetic energy from the electrons to make them move slower. And it does that using basically friction. So if you have conductors and insulators mixed together, and that's what a resistor is, it's some clay, which is an insulator, and carbon, which is a conductor, you mix them together, and the insulator mixed with that conductor causes friction, and I'm doing air quotes here, friction for the electrons. And that friction, like if you rub your hands together, that's friction, you feel heat. You're using up the energy from rubbing your hands together and turning it into heat. And that's what a resistor does with electrons. It turns their kinetic energy into heat, thereby slowing them down. We can calculate how much heat per second that resistor gives off using the formula P equals IV, power equals current times voltage. And that is, in fact, going to give us heat per second, which would be joules per second. So you get the units joules per second when you do this, and we call the unit joules per second watts. And this is like watts in your light bulb. Um, if you get a 100 watt light bulb, it's generating 100 joules of energy per second. Power is the rate of work, and this relates back to when we did power equals work over time, and the energy dissipated. So it's the amount of work being done by that resistor to get rid of some of the kinetic energy, because you might remember work is change in kinetic energy. So it's the change in kinetic energy, therefore power is change in kinetic energy over time. It's how much per second we change the electron's kinetic energy. And it does, in fact, determine bulb brightness. The higher wattage a bulb, the brighter it is. Two examples to start us off. One really conceptual, one mathematic. First, a bulb with resistance R and another resistance 3R are connected in series. How do they compare in brightness? And by what factor is one brighter than the other? Okay, for, for this first question, we're going to imagine two light bulbs connected to a power source in series. So here is light bulb number one, light bulb number two. And this one is R and 3R. And the question says, how do they compare in brightness? Okay, That means we're looking at their power, which is current times voltage. We don't know the voltage of the power source, but here's a nifty little trick that I like to use. Voltage is current times resistance meaning that this equation, if I sub in current times resistance for voltage, this equation turns into P equals I, I R, or P equals I squared R. And I actually keep this equation in my head too, along with P equals IV. I showed you the P equals IV first because that's the one on the AP formula sheet for the test, but if you memorize P equals I squared R, it can make some problems easier. Okay, this is a series circuit meaning that both of these get the same current. So the I through this one is the same I through this one. Just as many electrons will pass through both every second. So if their I's are the same, in this case, their resistance is what matters for their, for their power. And if I work through this equation down here, one of them, let's call R the red bulb, R has P equals I squared times just R, so that's the R up there. And the 3R bulb has P equals I squared times 3R. Well, this equation is clearly three times bigger than that one. So the 3R bulb, 3R is 3x brighter. 
Now you might want, in your head might want to say, oh, so their resistance determines how bright they are. Like if one is four times more resistance, then it's four times brighter. That's only true in a series circuit. Later in this video, I'll show you what to do about a parallel circuit. But be aware that the rule is not consistent across all circuits. You do need to go through the thought process or eventually, maybe in your head, have the two categories, series and parallel, and know what happens in both. But this, bigger resistance, bigger brightness, only works for the series circuit. Next up, a 20 ohm resistor in parallel with a 50 ohm resistor is connected to a 4 volt potential. What is the total power dissipated? Draw a little line so we don't confuse these two problems. I am assuming I'll have enough space here. Let's hope that works out. So first I'm going to draw the circuit. And it is helpful for me when solving these problems to always draw them. A 20 ohm resistor in parallel with a 50 ohm resistor connected to a 4 volt potential. So here's our battery. It's 4 volts. And then we have one 20 ohm resistor connected in parallel to a 50 ohm resistor. What is the total power dissipated? So we need the total power through both of these. Both of the power equations I've talked about so far, we're going to need to know the current. So whether we're using this one or this one, we're going to need to know the current. So we need to figure that out. According to Ohm's law, we can figure out the current using V equals IR. And I know we can do that because we have V and we have R. We are going to need the equivalent resistance for this circuit, though. And this is parallel, so 1 over equivalent resistance equals 1 over 20 ohms plus 1 over 50 ohms. It is important that you know how to do common denominators to do those without a calculator. Um, for quickness in this video, I'm going to grab a calculator and do them real fast. However, you may want to try to pause the video and solve that on your own just to make sure you can find common denominators because on multiple choice AP, you won't have a calculator. So maybe pause and try that one on your own without a calculator. I got the equivalent resistance is 14.3. And by the way, if you're trying common denominators, I would recommend 100 because 20 times 5 is 100 and 50 times 2 is 100. But I got the REQ is 14.3 ohms. And that makes sense. Remember, in a parallel circuit, your equivalent resistance must be smaller than any of the other resistors. So now let's figure out our, our current. I'm going to switch colors so these don't start to blend together. Uh, current would be, if I divide by R on both sides, V over R equals I. So my current would be 4 volts divided by 14.3 ohms. And that gives me current, which is... 0 0.28 ohms. And I am going to need a little more room. So I've got 0 0.28 ohms. And now, you might be thinking, okay, so do I need to find each one separately and add them? No, because when you found equivalent resistance, whatever you find is the same as taking both of these old resistors out and replacing them with a new one that's the same resistance you found earlier, 14.3. And I just messed up my units. So hopefully, you may have noticed this already. The units for current are not ohms, they are amps. So that's my current. And here's my resistance. That resistance is the resistance in the circuit. It's the same as if we took out those other two and replaced it with a resistor that's 14.3 ohms. So we can use that in the power equation. P equals I squared R. Or we could use voltage. P equals IV. Either one will work. Because now we know the resistance we also know the voltage, and we know the current. So we get to choose which one we want to use, and they'll both get us the same answer. I'm going to do the blue one, P equals IV, and then I want you to check to see if you do in fact get the same answer with P equals I squared R. Both equations should give you the same answer. If I do P equals IV, I get my current, 0 0.28 amps, my voltage, 4 volts, total power dissipated by that circuit is, 1.12 watts. And when I just checked it with the calculator, I did in fact get the same thing doing I squared R. But you should confirm that for yourself, convince yourself they both work. All right, let's talk about this conceptually for a minute. Um, hopefully you can see the bulb brightness here um, on your screen, but this one down here is brighter if you can't see that. Just know that the lines are brighter on the second one there. This is a series circuit. We have a power source, have a battery here. 
um, connected to two light bulbs. They're both light bulbs. So if you imagine the symbols, just so you remember that. And notice which one's brighter. The one with the greater resistance in the series circuit is brighter. And we already showed that in one of the earlier problems. That's because power depends on current and voltage. They both get the same current, and the one that with the greater resistance will have the same or the greater voltage drop across it. In fact, if you did V equals IR for both of them, you would find that the bulb with the greater resistance, because they have the same current, so current's the same, greater resistance, therefore greater voltage, greater voltage, therefore greater power, because current is the same for both. I'm realizing people might not be able to see me writing in yellow. But once again, greater resistance, therefore greater voltage drop, therefore greater power. And that's in a series circuit. So in a series circuit, the bulb with the greater resistance will be the brighter one. And I already talked through that in the last slide, so I'm going to move on from that. However, it's different in a parallel circuit. In a parallel circuit, they don't have to have the same current. It's just that whatever current leaves the battery must come back to that battery. They can split however they want right here. So part of it can go here, part of it can continue along. And that depends on the resistance of the bulb. The bulb will actually, sorry, the current actually wants the path of least resistance, just like people want to do the things that's easiest. And so more current would actually go toward the one with lower resistance. Let's talk about this mathematically. You will notice that the bulb that has the lower resistance in the parallel circuit is brighter. Remember that they both, in a parallel circuit, get the same voltage. So whatever the voltage is from the battery, 14 volts, this bulb here, if I put a voltmeter on it, would be getting 14 volts. This bulb here, if I put a voltmeter on it, would be getting 14 volts. And if you think about the equation, P equals IV, if voltage is the same, then what matters is current. And I already gave you the argument that the one with the least resistance gets the most current, because everything takes the path of least resistance. So high current would mean high power. But you could also think about it in terms of Ohm's law. V equals I R. Well, we know they're both 14 volts. So voltage is the same. The one with the lower resistance, so if resistance is low, in order to keep voltage the same, current would have to be high. In fact, you should take a second and figure out what would be the current on this bulb? What would be the current on this bulb? Figure that out. Pause the video. And now you'll notice that the one with the 10 ohm resistor has the greater current. In fact, if I've done this right, this one would get I equals 1.4 amps, and this one would get 0 0.7 amps. And so if their voltage is the same, thinking back at the power equation, if their voltage is the same, the one with the bigger current gets more power. So in a parallel circuit, the one with the lower resistance is brighter and gets more current and therefore has more power. So a higher watt bulb, this is confusing, a higher watt bulb in your house, the 100 watt actually has a lower resistance than the 40 watt because the 100 watt needs more current to go through it in order to burn off that much energy every second. Now let's think through this with definite math. If you buy a 100 watt light bulb and a 60 watt light bulb, which has greater resistance? Well, in your house, all, everything is wired in parallel. So we've got a power source somewhere. And then let's say we have these two light bulbs plugged into different lamps. We know one is 60 watts and one is 100 watts in their power. We want to know which one has the greater resistance. Well, you could figure that out conceptually using what I talked about in the last slide, P equals IV. Since the voltage is going to be the same everywhere, your house is a parallel circuit, the one with the greater current is the one that will be the one with the most power, the one that's brightest, one burning off the most power. And according to Ohm's law, if your voltage is the same everywhere, you must have a low resistance to have a high current. So back to power, the one with the high current has the high power, therefore the one with the high resistance has the low power, the one with the low resistance has the high power. So the 100 watt should have less resistance than the 60 watt. We can prove it, too. Your house 
is a 120 volt alternating current circuit. We're not going to learn in AP how to do alternating current circuits. That's in what's called APC or calculus based advanced placement physics. It's a different test, different class. So let's assume your house is a direct current circuit with a 120 volt power source. It is true that the wall outlets in your house are 120 volt. We are trying to figure out which one has the most resistance. If you think about the power equation, P equals IV, I could easily figure out the current through both bulbs using what's given to me. So let's do that real fast. For the 100 watt bulb, 100 watt, we don't know the current, but we do know it's 120 volts. So the current through the 100 watt bulb, if I solve that, would be 0 0.83 amps. For the 60 watt bulb, volts. If I divide by 120, it's 0 0.5 amps. So the 100 watt bulb definitely has more current going through it. And now we could work backwards using Ohm's law. So now I'm going to start color coding. Let's do the 100 watt first. So the 100 watt bulb, we said had a current of 0 0.83 amps. Well, if I do Ohm's law, V equals I R, and we're trying to figure out resistance, I know voltage, that's 120 volts. I know current, that's 0.83 amps. I'm looking for resistance. So I divide by 0.83 on both sides, and I get the resistance is 145 ohms. Now let's do the other bulb. We decided that the 60 watt bulb has a current of 0 0.5 amps through it in a 120 volt circuit in your house with 0 0.5 amps. If I divide by 0 0.5, my resistance is 240 ohms. So notice the one with the higher wattage had the lower resistance in a parallel circuit. And that's it.